welcome to the Liberty Mike Podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I'm here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Doing all right. Yeah? Yeah. Hmm. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, uh, okay, so um, yesterday was the anniversary of my dad's death. Oh, yeah. So, That's true. Uh, I don't know. There's a, like weird thoughts around that. Yeah. Um, I went, so his birthday is exact, or his, what would have been his 75th birthday is exactly three weeks earlier. Oh, okay. Uh, so on that day, I went down and I visited his grave, uh, which I haven't done much because mostly I can't figure out what exactly I'm supposed to do there, honestly. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, I was thinking about some things uh, about this and, and I, I don't know if I've ever talked about this on the podcast or not. Um, but you know, like he had a, a, a degenerative brain injury from, um, an arrogant doctor screwing up what should have been a routine biopsy, um, many years ago. Now on the flip side of that, I guess that that arrogant doctor is balanced out by another doctor, um, who saved his life in the end, yeah. you know, 20 years ago or whatever. Yeah. But, um, anyway, uh, we, we weren't really aware that the, you know, that he had this degenerative brain injury until like the very, very end. Yeah. And, uh, but it was obvious for a couple of years that something, something was thing, Things wrong. weren't, yeah, yeah. Things weren't like they um, should have been. But. And I'm sure that you picked up on that oh, yeah. probably too. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so I, I had... I don't know. He hadn't really been himself for a while. Yeah. And I guess I'd kind of um, said goodbye to him earlier yeah. than him actually dying. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and, but I was thinking while I was there um, a few weeks ago, I was like, well, you know, it, having part of him was certainly a whole lot better than having none of him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ab- Absolutely. And I'd agree with that wholeheartedly because I know, I mean, I remember those times when, when towards the end there or a couple of the last couple of years, Mm -hmm. you know, he just, he wasn't as energetic and wasn't, you know, was always kind of down, but you still had him, you know, like when you had problems, you still had somebody to go to, you know? Yeah. And, um, you know, that's gone now. Yeah. So. Yeah. Irrevocably. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. It's been, you know, we, I was over at mom's last night and had dinner with mom and, yeah. um, you know, we talked about some things with him, although we mostly talked about other stuff in, in the end anyway, but it was, yeah, it's a hard day, man. That's always a, a difficult one. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't connect with days quite in that way. I yeah. mean, like I was uh, certainly like aware oh, yeah. <laughs> as it was coming and, yeah. you know, when it was there, but, um, I don't know. The day itself doesn't actually hold any particular meaning. I was aware that it was coming up because a thing popped up in my Facebook about the wreck I had <laughs> days before. Oh yeah. <laughs> or like, yeah, the day before the funeral. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that got to my mom. Like, uh, <laughs> cause she was, um, she was like, Oh no, you know, is Gary hurt now too? <laughs> and oh, no, no, he's, <laughs> yeah. he's, he's actually, he's, Pretty much fine. Walked away from that one, man. <laughs> yeah. no. um, but uh, one of the things, and it wasn't actually last night that I was talking with mom about this, but she was asking me, I don't know, I guess maybe a couple of weeks ago, um, how I felt about the Olympic boycott. Oh, yeah. And uh, I don't know. It seems like as good a place as any to talk about that. I um, Yeah, so that came across my radar. So it's just the... U.S. officials won't be attending the the Olympic. the The players will still be there. Am I understanding correctly? I yeah, I think that's what it has become. Yeah. Um, because my understanding was like the diplomats wouldn't be there, and the yeah. U.S. officials wouldn't be there. But like that, the, the we, we're still going to participate in the games. Yeah, there's some other countries that are boycotting. Well, some um, people probably have in the same us. way. Yeah, yeah, like the U.K. I think, and you know, some other some other places. Um, when she asked me about it, that wasn't the uh, at least that information wasn't out there. I guess oh, really? at that time. Yeah, and. Uh, I mean, but my feelings about it haven't really changed. And that's that, um, 
I, I'm opposed. I'm opposed yeah. to boycotting the Olympics. Yeah. The whole spirit of the Olympics is to have to healthy competition yeah. and yeah, yeah, um, and be a be a goodwill gesture. Well, and, and it seems kind of petty to me. And I think, generally speaking, the only people that are really harmed are the athletes that have worked really hard for this. Well, and, what irritates you know, me is... You know, always get that asterisk or be marred in that way. My irritation is, is the Olympics shouldn't be a government thing. Yeah. Like, that's... Because that's kind of where I... The, ain't the perspective I come from at it mm -hmm. is, like, the gov the Olympics should be something that's separate from our government. Yeah. Um, And, I mean, maybe there's some problems with that in some areas mm -hmm. because, like... You could because the government it would be the, like Russia cheating or something like that. Yeah. Um. But I don't know, man. Like to me, I've always viewed it as this: like these these countries participate, but it's not like a government deal. You know, yeah, there's yeah. no reason for government to really be involved. Yeah. Um. Well, and I think it's a it's a really um, stark illustration of the fact that the the any kind of mass conflict in the world is government and government. It doesn't have anything to do with the people. Yeah. It, it goes back to, yeah, like people fight, you know, their little family feuds and what have you, but like a true large scale conflict only happens between governments. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, and, and so to get we, government we involved the in the Olympics would just be to invite more of that. Yeah, it's just, and it shouldn't be a political thing at all. Yeah, it should um, be something for the people. And you know, it's it's one of those things that, like, it's it, it's always stood in the same way that things like the International Space Station and so forth. Yeah. You know, you have, you'll have scientists from countries that are in direct conflict Working together on the space station, they don't give a damn. Yeah, yeah, that's not their problem, <laughs> like, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And it's the same thing with these athletes. Like they're just going out there to compete. Yeah, they're they're going out there to compete and win. They don't really care who's on the other side or what kind of flag they're waving. They're only concerned yeah. about their own flag, if anything. Yeah. Um. And in recent years, you know, even they don't even really much care about their own flag. It seems like in a lot of cases. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I'm opposed to Olympic boycotts. I just think that it's petty and it is, um, in complete opposition to the purpose of the games in the first place. Yeah. It, it's not there to make a statement. It's there to be a goodwill gesture and foster healthy, healthy competition between, well, really between people. But if you want to look yeah. at it as a political thing, then be t uh, healthy competition between com countries. Yeah. I mean, I'm good with looking at it between countries, but to mm -hmm. me, it's just, it should be something that's outside the government realm. You yeah. know, I mean, it just shouldn't get trying to get, and I feel the same way about football and yeah. all kinds of stuff. Well, and like, even to bring it into an economic perspective, the same thing about trade. Yeah. What does the government have to do to say, I mean, w what right do they have to say that I cannot trade with somebody on the other side of this arbitrary line anyway. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, if this person and I agree to make an exchange, then who is the government to tell us that we can't because he's on the wrong side of some line? <laughs> it's funny that you mentioned that. So I was watching World News on the way over here, mm -hmm. and they were talking about uh, one of these countries... You're watching in TV while you're driving? No, on the way over here. I meant before I came over here. Okay. <laughs> before the couch almost ate me on the way over here. Yeah. Um, and it was talking about one of, a, a group of these or a couple of these countries in um, in the UK somewhere. I don't know. Like mm -hmm. um, we're we're in a dispute because I guess one country is shipping its garbage to another country. Okay. <laughs> And this is a problem for some reason, but they like the the investigative journalism on it was just crazy to me because they had people on the ground going and visiting the sites that were being accused of accepting the garbage from the country mm -hmm. and stuff. And all I could think is, man, this boils down to property rights, yeah, one hundred percent. Like because the the they were interviewing the guys that were and they were like all like adamant, no, this is our garbage. This is not garbage. Didn't come from Germany or wherever the hell it was. And it was like. What like who cares? It's the guy's property. Like if they want to take garbage from another country, and yeah, why should it be anybody's business but his? Yeah, you know. 
Um, so, so many things in this world could just be boiled down to just regular property rights and let mm. people do what they want to do with their own property. Yeah. If some athlete has some kind of political statement to make and they want to boycott the games, that's up to them. But yeah. Yeah. Don't go know. be on the biggest stage there is. <laughs> yeah. Like <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It, it's certainly your choice. You know, I, I just, uh, I don't have a problem with it. Yeah. I, I don't either. And I, and like I said, I, I think that the boycott is just like this political grandstanding, and I think it's petty. Yeah. I, I think it doesn't speak well. So do us. you know why they're bo- boycotting? Because it's China. Yeah. I mean, that's what I thought. I mean, I was pretty sure I had, um, with the thing I had saw said that they were upset over the human rights abuses in China. Yeah, because and, obviously the U.S. and the U.K. have well, no connection to any human rights abuses You, you anywhere, make a right? good point because, I mean, a lot of the stuff that, I mean, I don't know, I guess I should read a little closer, but I'm pretty sure the stuff that um, they're accusing China of. Yeah. How <laughs> dare those Chinese mistreat those Muslims there? And Yeah, exactly. Okay. <laughs> well, like, have you not been a part of the, you know, United States news over the last 20 years? Come on. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Right. Oh, yeah. I like, mean, just because they're they're not within our own country doesn't make it any less of a human rights abuse. I, yeah. I, you know, and even right now, like, talk about human rights abuses, regardless of how they want to frame the Yemen war. Um, you know, leading from behind or whatever. Oh, we're just supporting the Saudis. No, yeah. no, no. We're we're directly supporting the Saudis in an in what amounts to a medieval siege of Yemen, targeting the civilian population there for starvation. Yeah. Like, there's, I can't even imagine. I mean, women, you know, women, children, non old people, non fighters. Like they're all being affected by this, and it wasn't that long ago. Again, you know, you're right. We just, I just need to pull this clip. Of Madeleine Albright on 60 Minutes when asked about the bombing campaign in Iraq through the Clinton years, yeah. um, and saying, you know, well, the the bombing campaign and the blockade, uh, or the sanctions, yeah. uh, you know, how whatever you want to call it. Um, are, uh, you know, there are estimates that uh, they have been the cause of the deaths of 500,000 children. And do you think that that's a worthwhile price to get rid of Saddam Hussein? She said yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I, I just can't imagine the... Oh, God, night, man. Yeah, so explain like, to me how that's not a human rights abuse. Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, we are perfectly <laughs> content with starving out half a million children. Like, at the end of the day... <laughs> for political, yeah. you know, goals. Like, protecting the uh, children is the most important thing. So if you... <laughs> so, and I don't want to get onto a Blame America First thing. It's just... No, it's, no. The, the point is that even... Th- this is hypocritical, and it's not... And they're aware that it's hypocritical. It's just political grandstanding. Yeah, yeah. No, I absolutely Because agree. we're... And the reason, it doesn't even make any sense. The, actually, the the real reason is because China is arising as an economic rival to the United States. Yeah. And that's what it's really about. It doesn't have anything to do with human rights. We don't care about... It. The, our our yeah. government does not care about human rights. <laughs> right. <laughs> does not care about human rights. Yeah. I mean, you got but it's, sections but it's, of the government here right now talking about like holding people down and injecting them with yeah. uh, vaccines if they don't want it. Yeah. I mean... Yeah. They are not concerned about human rights. Exactly. But that's for your own good, though, right? Oh, yeah, well, of course. I, I'm sure the Chinese could make a similar argument about why they're re-educating the Uyghurs. Yeah, yeah. Um, and there's also been, uh, you know, plenty of reports. Um, oh, gosh, I can't think of his name. Um, from the Gray Zone uh, did a, a piece of, you know, it might be close to a year ago now, essentially debunking the um, the the degree of um, of the abuses of the Uyghurs yeah. in China. Not saying that they're you know that they're oh. completely alone, but and that, like I say, I'm not try- I'm not here to make an argument. That I think China's a bunch of good guys in a great no. place because I mean they're like I wouldn't want to live there. I wouldn't want to live there. I mean they're a bunch of commies. Like I mean I have a problem <laughs> with that. Like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean I'm not saying that you know, but it's to me it's just the idea of the U.S. gonna gonna boycott the olympics over something Mm -hmm. is just silly and it's just because we're determined to be antagonistic with them yeah i mean they're these are two of the most intertwined economies in the world also the u.s and the chinese economy um (laughs) if you make the stuff we will consume it yeah and and (laughs) you make it and we'll buy it you know we're real critical of trump's trade war with china yeah um first off that you, you can't win 
the trade war with China. And But the most important bit is like, why would we be complaining? We're sending them our worthless paper and they're sending us stuff. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> be it cheap stuff. It's <laughs> yeah. still stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And we has more it. value than the paper we're sending over there. Well, exactly. Sure. Like, Especially now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, so I, I just think I, I, I'm opposed to an Olympic boycott. Yeah. Um, now, interestingly, and this is a little transition to another topic, but um, uh, Bernard at Moon of Alabama uh, pointed out that um, in... Well, that he expects a uh, Kiev, NATO, U.S. Um, attack on the Donbass region in Ukraine in early February 2022, because at that point in time, Putin will be attending the opening of the Olympic Games. Um, and oh. that would mirror um, when the uh, the attack on Russian peacekeeping forces in Georgia in 2008, while Putin was attending the opening of the Olympic Games <laughs> in well. Beijing. Yeah, in Beijing, yeah. Um, hmm. And so, uh, you know, this is the this is the hot um, foreign policy topic of the week is is Ukraine, and uh, it's been all right. Well, I mean, I guess we I should have gone back and looked. Um, I think the title of the episode is like uh, um, "F the EU and Russia too." Oh yeah, that um, sounds familiar. <laughs> yeah, where we we talked about um, the U.S. involvement in the Ukraine over the years, yeah. um, but right now, or uh, you know, in the last week, essentially, um, Biden uh, threatened economic sanctions, you know, crippling economic sanctions um, on Russia, um, including you know threatening their ability to complete the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. Of course, we've been been doing that for for, five years or something. We're doing everything we can to roadblock that. (laughs) Yeah. Um, But he's threatening, uh, you know, crippling economic sanctions, um, threatening to uh, contribute presumably materiel um, to uh, Ukraine's defense um should Russia invade yeah. and uh or well make a military move i think i don't remember exactly how it was phrased but it wasn't like yeah. if you invade it was something a little bit more vague than that yeah. um but uh and um you know pr- helping organize um our eastern european allies into a uh, a block against russian aggression um, in the border areas. And that was in response to uh, a reported Russian mobilization of between 170 and 250,000 troops on the border of Ukraine yeah. uh, preparing for an invasion, they say. Uh, of course, that is a movement of Russian troops within its own borders. Once again, yeah. Yeah, yeah. within its own borders um, as a response to... Uh, to a bunch of bluster from Kiev, uh, from the capital of Ukraine, yeah. um, talking about crushing the rebellion in the Donbass region. Um, and there's some updates to that. First off, that number uh, turned out to be like completely fabricated. Yeah. Um, the, the Russians have roughly 70,000 troops uh, in the area um, that are more or less around their home bases. Uh, yeah. Like that's where they are. That's <laughs> yeah, that's, that's where that's they're where stationed. they stay. Yeah. Um, and uh, I don't know the whole the whole thing is pretty absurd to me. Um, now there's because there's so many reasons that it's absurd. First off, again, go listen to the uh, F the EU and Russia two um, podcast that we did a couple of years ago about the history here. Um, but the U.S. sponsored a coup in Ukraine. Um, in 2014, yeah. and the, of course the 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 title is a reference to the leaked um, audio of Victoria Newland uh, talking about how they were going to remove Yanukovych and um, and install Yatsenyuk in uh, Ukraine. Yeah. Um, and that Biden would tie up the deal. Biden, who was the vice president at the time, yeah. would tie up the deal. Now, these are the same people. Victoria Nuland is back in the White House, by <laughs> yeah, the way. Right. Um, and, of course, Biden is now president instead of vice president. He's been intimately linked to the Ukraine stuff for a while. See Hunter Biden. <laughs> yeah. um, and, uh, you know, the, it, this is what this is really about 
is these two provinces of uh, Donetsk and Lugansk um, in south southeastern eastern Ukraine um, in what they call the Donbass region that are ethnically Russian. Yeah. Um, and in 2015, as a matter of fact, these two provinces um, held votes that, and the results were that they wanted to leave the Ukraine and join uh, the Russian Republic. Yeah. To which, by the way, Putin, who's going to invade and take over these areas, said, no thanks. Declined. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, now that's not to say that he hasn't been assisting there. Um, yeah. they, they've been almost certainly, I mean, I can't prove this, but they, they've been almost certainly sending, um, you know, special forces type of units into, uh, Ukraine, things that they can deny. Yeah. Um, but to help the, those Russian speaking, those ethnically Russian Ukrainians defend themselves against the central government of Ukraine that we installed. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, and, uh, you know, there, the Donbass region is defending itself from the central government of Ukraine. Yeah. They don't want to be a part of it. And, uh, Ukraine's not taking, Kiev's not taking no for an answer, yeah. essentially. Um, now this goes back into like secession talk. Like if you've got a group of people that don't want to be governed by a particular government, yeah. Should they be forced to be governed by that particular government? <laughs> yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, if Russia doesn't want them, then it seems more than reasonable if they don't want to be governed by Kiev that they form their own little autonomous that region. They just become independent. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, of course, you know, one of the important points here, one of the things to consider is, uh, you, and it's the same kind of thing with Taiwan. Um, so I don't know. We ever we didn't really ever talk about the Taiwan Not stuff really. either. Yeah. Um, but you know, at the beginning of this, uh, Biden was saying that you know was implying that we would defend Ukraine. Yeah. Um, against Russia. And now, of course, what that really means is if the government in Kiev attacks Eastern Ukraine and the Russians try to defend Eastern Ukraine against the government, the central government of Ukraine, then we will intervene then also on the side of the central government of Ukraine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Um, and, you know, we're saying, we've been saying the same thing about Taiwan, although, well, Biden said it, and then his administration walked it back, but, yeah. you know, again, that, well, we're, we will defend Taiwan um, should uh, China invade, which is a stupid idea. Yeah, yeah that's like um, we, the last thing know, we need to do. <laughs> we cannot defend Taiwan against China if China wants to, really wants to go there. Um, yeah. The other thing is that it's not so easy for China to go there as you might think, yeah. um, because it would take a hell of a force to take Taiwan. All right, I'm getting off track. Anyway, yeah. um, the, the point is that, uh, particularly with Russia, uh, you're talking about, you have to calculate in the existence of thousands of thermonuclear weapons. Yeah. Well, and yeah, even dealing with China, the same thing, although they don't have thousands. They have they hundreds. They have enough. Yeah, yeah. they have I hundreds. Mean, the, and so the question you end up having to ask is, you know, for the people of Ukraine or for the people of Taiwan, how many American lives are you willing to risk and or sacrifice yeah. um, for those people? And the answer should be none, by yeah. the way. How many American cities yeah. are you willing to risk for the independence of Taiwan? Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, this is their problem. And it's mm -hmm. it's no different than if Texas decided to secede from the Union, mm -hmm. like tomorrow, just all of a sudden decide they're going to be independent. And China stepping in and being like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. If No, if Tex it would be like if Texas decided to secede. And the the central U.S. government, Washington D.C., went to attack Texas to force them back into the union. Yeah. And China stepped in on the side of Texas. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I yeah. mean, you know, I mean, come on. Like, there's there's no reason for China to be involved in that. There's no reason yeah. for us to be involved over there. Like, it's just it's, and we don't even really, you know. And the difference is that China has sense enough not to. Yeah. Well, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, and it's not it's just a, because we have a more powerful military than China. Yeah. It's the they're they're concerned with their local sphere, like something that they can control. Yeah. For whatever reason, somewhere along the way, the U.S. government has decided that we can control the entire world. Yeah, yeah, and no, and we we exercise that that constantly. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. 
I mean, it's it's crazy. And I mean, the, the same thing with everything in the Middle East. Like, mm. I mean, there's no reason for us to be over there doing all the things that we are doing. Yeah. Like, it's just, it's it's it doesn't make any sense. It yeah. doesn't help it's us. It's not our business. Yeah. And, and the security of the United States does not depend on any of these places. The no. security of the United States does not depend on, on Taiwan remaining a free state. No. Such as it is. Yeah. Um, it, the security of the United States does not depend on Ukraine taking control of the entire Donbass region. Yeah. It just doesn't. It no. doesn't matter. And the, the security of the United States, talk about energy all you want, does not depend on us having control of all the oil in the Middle East. Yeah. No. Or any of it. Well, and that's what creates <laughs> the terrorism in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, that's the reason you have a 9 11 event. Like, yeah. You, well, yeah, you go over there, you prop up friendly government, well, governments that are friendly to the U.S. but are terrible to their to the people. people. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah. and then those people, instead of blaming the government that's being terrible to them, they're blaming mm. the U.S. because the U.S. is so involved. Yeah. Um, now, the the upside of this is, and I'm I'm taking liberally from uh, Gilbert Doctorow, who's a, uh, who's a Russia guy and lives over in... Belgium, I think, um, writes for anti-war and some other places. Uh, so he usually has pretty good insight into this. And, yeah. um, he was making some assumptions about this, uh, this, uh, online meeting between Biden and Putin that they haven't, to my knowledge at this point, really released many details from. Yeah. Um, I didn't so, realize this had happened. So this is, yeah, it happened me. yesterday, okay. I guess. Well, yeah. I um, and so, uh, I, I am absolutely like taking his word for this, but, yeah. um, you know, it's the best we've got right now, or best I've have access to right now. Yeah. Um, now first off that giant troop number I may have mentioned already is more like 70,000. It's not 175,000 and it's sure as hell not 250,000. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, you know, Moon of Alabama was saying that uh, in order for Russia to put 250,000 um, active fighting troops on the border with Ukraine, that's like a majority of their active fighting troops <laughs> in the entire country of Russia that covers 11 time zones. Yeah, right. And so obviously they put that many troops on the border with Ukraine. They have They're given vulnerable. up defense yeah. everywhere else. <laughs> They're so vulnerable. Yeah. That it was an absurd number to begin with. It just like, yeah. doesn't make any sense at all. Um, and, uh, the, some of the results that we've seen from the meeting already, um, is that they are restoring, uh, diplomatic presence. Um, if you'll remember, uh, at the end of Obama's term, um, he kicked out a bunch of Russian diplomats and took over a bunch of Russian, um, you know, state owned properties in the U S yeah. yeah. Uh, and Trump continued some of that because he couldn't be nice to Russia because uh, he was obviously a Russian spy. And so he <laughs> couldn't do anything nice for them. Yeah. Um, and, uh, so, uh, apparently they're bringing, um, Russian diplomats back in and allowing them access to these properties that were seized. Yeah. Six years that was ago, a while or, back now, yeah, because yeah, that was under Obama. Yeah. Twenty sixteen, five years ago. Yeah, All right. Um, actually, we're yeah, because it, it was be a, about, it was after the election of yeah, yeah. In, in that in between time, that lame duck time. Yeah, so it was about five years ago. Yeah. Um, and uh, Biden was supposed to. Well, okay, at least Vladimir Zelensky, who's the president of Ukraine in Kiev. Yeah. Um, had at least been given the impression that he would be contacted by Biden immediately after this meeting. Yeah. Um, and then he was told that he was going to have to wait till today. <laughs> uh, presumably to give um, Biden time or Biden's team time um, to talk with the Western European allies uh, yeah. before they talked to Zelensky. Um, it, they made it uh, fairly clear, it seems at this point, that they will not be defending Ukraine against Russia should Ukraine decide that they're going to take the Donbass region on their own. Yeah. Um, and a, that that goes a long way towards diffusing the situation. That's so good. it's it's diffused for now because uh, Ukraine can't be confident that they will get U.S. support if they go in there militarily and the Russians help defend the Donbass region. Yeah. Um, now, if you'll remember back to the issue in Georgia, uh, you know, in Georgia, the they were given the impression that the U.S. would defend 
them against the Russians. Yeah. And it happened. And then we didn't do it. Yeah. Then we didn't do it. So, um, so there's reason to, for them to be skeptical beyond yeah. what we're telling them. Yeah, know. but the, the point is that you know part of the reason that conflict occurred is because they thought that they would get U.S. support. Yeah. And hopefully just the fact that you can't be certain that you'll get U.S. support or that U.S. is suggesting that you won't get their support is enough to prevent them from trying to do from anything. Doing something, yeah. Um, so f- at least for right now... I mean, this seems to be something that's that's going by the wayside. Yeah. Um, but regardless of whether it's it's going by the wayside now or not, like the conflict still remains, yeah. and there's still the possibility that something could flare up between the U.S. and Russia. And if something flares up between the U.S. and Russia, it's hard to say where that will end. Yeah. And I, I was talking with somebody about Putin and I know a lot of people don't like Putin and I understand. I, I'm not out here to say that he's a good person or anything like that. Yeah. Um, I mean, he, he, he's gotten to where he's at for a reason. Yeah. Oh yeah. He's absolutely like, he is ruthless yeah. and cold. Yeah. And that's a part of why we should be glad that he's there. Yeah. because he he is dispassionate about these kinds of things. And you remember a few years ago when we killed Russian troops in Syria. Oh, I remember that, yeah. And he kind of brushed it off as well, you know, mistakes happened, didn't know who was there, we accept your apology, it's all right. Yeah. Like, I... That could have been bad, I yeah. remember that. Like, that was, we were... <laughs> if he had not taken mm-hmm. the stance he took... Mm-hmm. We may not be here now. <laughs> yeah, imagine a more hot-headed leader there. Yeah. You yeah. know, somebody that was passionate. Uh, I, you know. I mean, a Trump. I mean, <laughs> and, yeah, and that was the other thing that I was going to say. Imagine if that happened in the other direction. Yeah. Do you think that the U.S. government would say, oh, yeah, well, you know, it, this is an unfortunate event. Um, we understand you didn't know who was there. Uh, we accept your apology. Mistakes happen. Let's try and make sure that this doesn't happen again. Yeah. Or do you think that they would feel like they had to Retaliate. now go? Yeah. 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 Um, and so I, I'm not sure if our own government would ha- have acted with, uh, you know, the same kind of prudence that he did. Yeah. Yeah. And part of it is that I, I think that our government doesn't feel like they have to. Yeah. <laughs> That we feel like that we can take out anybody in the world anyway, so who cares? But the the yeah. truth is, while like nobody wins in a nuclear war, yeah. <laughs> that's the truth. <laughs> nobody wins in a nuclear war. Yeah. Um. You, we may completely obliterate Russia, but the U.S. Get some will hits never. Yeah, yeah. The U.S. will never be the same again. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Well. Yeah. And that's. Yeah. You're exactly right. Because even if um Russia only gets a few hits in, mm-hmm. don't take that many. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't take a lot. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Um. You know, uh, you're and I go back to thermonuclear weapons because I don't think people really understand. They like you've seen these big explosions at Hiroshima and and some of these bomb tests afterwards, and and they're amazing. Like they're yeah. really impressive, and they should be kind of horrifying, especially when you realize the next part, which is one of those bombs is the trigger mechanism for the bomb that we have now. Yeah, <laughs> that's insane. <laughs> yeah. I mean, a, an atomic bomb like what was dropped on Hiroshima is what they use to trigger the the thermonuclear explosion of a bomb now. Yeah. They are much, much, much more destructive. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, that's... It's not to be taken lightly. Yeah, exactly. And, um, you know, you can say that, uh, well, you know, the, the existence of nuclear weapon has, has prevented... Um, the big powers from fighting with each other ever since the development of nuclear weapons. Uh, And that's true to some degree. So now what has happened though, is that you've ended up with all these little satellite conflicts in Vietnam. Vietnam was still, you know, between the, it was a proxy war. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was between the Chinese and the Russians and the Americans, Korea, the same way. Um, like, so we've had these little proxy wars all over the place where, there Which were is really US convenient and, because the U.S. doesn't really have to declare war. <laughs> yeah, well, I, we don't do that anyway anymore. Yeah, exactly. Um, we just kind of go in and do our thing. Because <laughs> people wouldn't agree to that. You, you wouldn't get reelected if you voted for that. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so there are uh, Chinese and Russian and American troops involved in these little little proxy wars, these little satellite wars all over the place. Um, but then they're in a position where they don't have to declare their activity. Yeah. But 
the thing is that yeah, this These, works until it doesn't, and when yeah. it doesn't, the one it only takes failure one time. Well, and and we're so far removed from these bombs being dropped on anybody Mm -hmm. that people, especially people in government, because that's what you worry about, you know, is the president or the, you know, the people in charge, um, not realizing what they're doing, that the danger that these weapons are and, Mm -hmm. and that the danger of poking countries that have these weapons is. Yeah. Well, and the danger goes all the way down. Like I, I recommend that people read the doomsday machine. Um, and because what he, you know, what he talks about there is that there, you know, that while the idea that the authority rests only in the president of the United States to declare a nuclear war, it's not true. Yeah. In, in practice, that's not the case at all. Yeah. Um, all these, uh, these military bases where they have nuclear weapons, those base commanders feel like they have the authority to declare a nuclear war too. Yeah. Um, if they don't get, you know, the right order, but it seems like something has happened, right. they do feel like they can take the authority among themselves to go ahead and launch an attack yeah. to give the go ahead. If they don't, if they aren't told explicitly to bring um, their fighters back or bombers back. Yeah. And you got to think that there's got to be some, some bomber pilots that feel the same way too. Yeah. Like we got up there and, and now the officially the orders are, if you aren't told explicitly to go on, then yeah. you're supposed to come back. Yeah. But you have to think that there are some bomber pilots that would feel like if they didn't get the order to go on, yeah. That's because the people that would give that order have been blown We're gone. up. gone, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, yeah. and that we are and already in a it's nuclear a, war. It's a game time decision. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, you know, it only it only takes one. It to only takes off. one guy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. and then it's, if a single nuclear weapon goes off, then that triggers a whole bunch we're more. We're done. I'm, like, yeah. I mean, yeah. Um, I mean, I say we're done. Like, the, the process has been started. Because if mm-hmm. one goes off, it's not going to be like your incident with Putin before mm-hmm. where we'll, we're just going to let this slide. Yeah. Like, I mean. And then Bill Crystal will finally admit that a mistake has been made. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes, he will. <laughs> he, we will have met his threshold. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just a few <laughs> nuclear bombs going off. Yep. Um, so this is important things to keep an eye on. Um, for whatever reason, this kind of foreign policy stuff is never really brought before the American people. Um, no, this, um, I mean, everything you just kind of went through there was all news to me. Yeah. And I watched the news. <laughs> yeah. Well, the news doesn't give you any information. Yeah. Like, I mean, uh, I, I didn't know any of that was even going on, man. Yeah. So... so um, it's just something to keep an eye on and to be aware of and to not fall for the propaganda. Yeah. I mean, there's plenty of propaganda to try and, uh, you know, keep not out of your head for. <laughs> uh, right now. Just but, turn on the TV. But this is another one of those things. And and if this is propaganda and preparation, as as Bernard thinks, um, for an invasion of the Donbass region by, you know, some alliance between NATO, uh, Kiev, and the U.S. Yeah. Um, in the future— uh, we we need to be wary of that, and we need to make sure that that does not happen. Yeah, because that it's a real dangerous game these guys are playing with all of our lives. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, absolutely. Um. So yeah, that's that's all nice and happy. <laughs> all right. Let's talk about the virus. <laughs> oh yeah. This this actually is nice and happy. It seems <laughs> to me. Well, I'll tell you. So um, it's. The media really is missing the ball on this one, man. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, there's there's still all of this fear around, oh, man, the Omicron's here, and mm-hmm. the Omicron's going to get you. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's it's the craziest thing. So I was at work today, and I heard a couple on the next aisle, just a couple of customers just chatting, mm-hmm. um, but all concerned about how bad this Omicron's going to be. It's, oh, man, the Omicron's here now, and, uh, you know, we're going to end up blocked in our houses again, and... Like just well, that's a, that's a legitimate concern. Well, it is a legitimate concern, but it's like, man, like this 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 should be good news that this that this version of the virus is is less severe. Yeah, you know. Well, I talked to a doctor yesterday for a while that I have a lot of respect for. Yeah, um, he's a general practitioner, but he, you know, he's doctor. he's very good. Yeah, um, he's sharp. Like. Yeah. And and uh, I like him a lot. And if his rates weren't so high, I would <laughs> consider switching. Although I really like my doctor too. Um, but anyway, uh, we got in a discussion about um, 
about the vaccines and so forth. Yeah. And uh, and Omicron. And I, I you know, I don't want to like out too much, so I'm not going to talk about the vaccine part. I'll tell you after we <laughs> the recordings. But um, let me just say though that that. Uh, I presented him with a lot of the information that I present on this podcast. Yeah. And he did not, in fact, the fact stuff, like the data yeah. and so forth. Um, and um, there was nothing that I said that he was like, no, that's not correct. Yeah, <laughs> that could be disputed. Right. Yeah. So it made me feel good in that way that the that my sources of information are reliable. Yeah. I mean, he's spending a whole lot more time in medical journals than I am. But, oh, absolutely. Um, but that I... It, it gave me confidence that I have a good grasp of what's going on here. Yeah. Um, but, you know, one of the things that we did talk about for a few minutes was the Omicron stuff. And I, I said, you know, like, I can't keep up with everything. But my understanding here is that this has been around for months, first off. Yeah. Um, that while it's just been reported as a new variant, like, it's actually been around for a while. And we were joking last time about how the Netherlands was trying to claim that, well, it started here. <laughs> right. you know, so, um, phone finger number one. And, uh, he said, yeah, absolutely. That's how these things work. I mean, they, yeah. these variants, by the time they're reported, they've been around. Yeah. Um, well, and that, ha that goes back to the way they find these variants, right? Because I mean, everybody that gets tested doesn't get tested for the variant. Right. They just get tested for the virus. Mm -hmm. So you have to, there, there's a process they follow to get to. So yeah, I mean, once they do genetic testing, they're not doing genetic testing on every to ev to every test, person. Right? That's what I'm saying. So, like I say, that's the reason there's like a delay here as far as when the new variant is is pops up or whatever. Yeah, and eventually they do the CSI rotate enhance et cetera thing and, yeah. and work it out. Yeah. Um. But uh, he said yes. It's 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 certainly been around for months before it got reported. Yeah. Um. I said, well, my. My understanding is at this point there have been zero deaths reported related to the Omicron variant. Yeah. He said that's correct. <laughs> and I said, well, also to my understanding, there have been zero hospitalizations reported related to Omicron. Is that correct? Yeah. And he said, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, then isn't this good news? <laughs> yeah. How is how is any of that bad news? Yeah. Um, so, uh, yes, this is... The, the bad news is that it's being used once again to try and ramp up all of these authoritarian uh, mandates and lockdowns and, and so forth. It's, it's the hopefully the last push um, to try and get everybody vaccinated. It, and it feels like it's the last weakest push for yeah. particularly the, the regulations and the stuff mm -hmm. like that, the stuff that we would be worried about, you know, yeah. the lockdowns and things like that. Um, the media is absolutely using this as a push for that third booster. Mm -hmm. um, like the everything I've seen is they the they've had people on there talking about. Well, if you get that third booster, that really seems to to have an effect on the Omicron variant. Like that's yeah. that's the the propaganda. Yeah. Well, I always I find these things interesting, and I, I know that there's statistical ways to to measure this, but. Um, it seems to me that when we're presented with this stuff, we're not really given any data. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I kind of want to come back to that too, but um, you can't like, they're making an assumption about how bad it would have been without yeah. <laughs> the vaccine. Yeah. And you can't know how, like what would have happened if, if only blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And th it, that's not scientific at all. Yeah. And, and speaking of that, <clears throat> We we saw Fauci get back out there again yeah. and tell us all how he represents science and that all he does is promote science and that he's there to save people's lives and you know all this other <laughs> yeah. um, you know self aggrandizing. He, he is science. <laughs> yeah, all this other self aggrandizing crap, and and that was actually something else that I found interesting um, talking to the doctor is that he said that uh, he said that because. Um, somebody there said that um, Fauci hadn't had a patient in 40 years. You know, like, why are we listening to this guy? Yeah. And um, and the doctor said, Fauci's never had a patient. <laughs> that yeah. he went straight from medical school into academia and then into government. He has never been a never. practicing doc wow. doctor. I mean, I guess I, I didn't know that. It doesn't mm. surprise me. Yeah. But I, I, didn't, I wasn't aware of that. Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> I really need a sip of water. But... uh. 
anyway, the the whole idea that he's giving a misleading impression of science. He's taking advantage of people the way people are taught science anyway. Yeah. And I know that I talk about, I harp on this all the time, but I think that this is really important yeah. thing for people to recognize. Um, when he gets up there and says, uh, I think, we think, it looks like maybe blah, 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 and I represent science. That None of that is science. Yeah. None of that is science at all. Science is, science is not, okay, so I saw somebody with a t-shirt the other day yeah. that said, science is not a liberal conspiracy. Yeah. <laughs> and I thought, yeah, you, that's absolutely true. Science yeah. is not a liberal conspiracy. Yeah. There's a lot of things that science isn't. Yeah. Um, and I like I I wish I had been in a position to confront the person and say, okay, you told me one thing that science is not. Can you tell me what science is? Yeah. yeah. Because I think because that most people can't answer that question. No, really. and I guarantee you, the person wearing the shirt didn't, because the person that's wearing the shirt is is on the side of Fauci. Like, yeah. That's that's a statement yeah. like to support. I mean, it Fauci. could be a global warming thing. It could be. It could be a lot of things. Yeah. But. Um, but, Something uh, tells me that he's a Democrat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure you're right. Yeah. Uh, so let me tell you something else that science isn't. Though. Yeah. Science is not an unassailable set of facts. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, science is how you get to ha the process of answering a question. Yeah. And it's not even about answering the question. It's about disproving things. Yeah. Um, so science is not a, an unassailable set of facts. Science doesn't establish facts um science disproves hypotheses and and nothing else but it's it's a verb it's about the process it's about the method of how you try and answer a question it's not about the answer yeah yeah well it's about yeah it's about disproving things and then you're yeah. left with what you're left with right as and as that's your best that yeah. are that are always in question like mm -hmm. um I want. I know. Years ago, we talked about gravity on one of the podcasts. Yeah. Um, that how gravity like still isn't like. A, yeah, and people think I'm nuts when I say that. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, the law of gravity isn't a law at all. The, the <laughs> yeah. law of gravity is actually something that is is under attack in yeah. in physics. Yeah. Um, and people are like, no, that's ridiculous. But yeah. it's not. It's yeah. the truth. Because, but it goes back to what you're saying is even once something is is presumably solid in science. Mm -hmm. It's still being tested and, and prodded at and, and to, to check it. Mm -hmm. Like that, that process never stops. Like you never yeah. stop questioning things, even though you think you know what the reality is. Yeah. I mean, the fact that the, the idea that any of this is unquestionable yeah. is the most anti-science thing. Yeah, because science is always questioning. That's mm -hmm. in its nature. That's what it does. Yeah. Yeah. So... Um, so I, I just get really frustrated with that approach and, and they are taking advantage of how you're, how you're taught science in public school, well, because that is how science is taught in most public schools is that like, these are the things that we know and that's science. They don't teach science as a method. Well, your mom taught science. I mean, that's mm -hmm. not how it was taught. I mean, I don't, I mean... I learned all of that when I was learning, so, like the fact that you question everything, that nothing yeah. is solid. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, maybe something has changed over the years because I public school all the way. Well, know? it depends on the teacher in a lot of ways, but yeah, I mean, you know, my mom didn't teach science as an unquestionable set of facts. <laughs> yeah, so, like, well, I, I imagine she didn't. It's the reason kind of <laughs> yeah. I brought that up. No. Like, <laughs> um, I mean, but there are plenty of people out there that at least that do. Yeah, yeah that at least exit the the public school program with that idea. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, that's, that's just clear in my interactions with people. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, I don't, I don't know that from any inside knowledge in schools. Yeah. I just know like you talk to enough people and you realize real quick that science ain't what we, what they, we have different opinions on what science is. Right. So, right. Um, I don't know, I guess I do it. I'm trying to think if there was something else that I really wanted to say about that, and I can't think of anything. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, it's like one of those... It, it's, one of those pet peeve things. Yeah. yeah that just yeah, really just irks you. harp on all the time. Yeah. But, like I said, I think, I think it's an some, important pe for people to understand because it puts you in a position to better understand what's going on around you and to recognize the BS yeah. when it comes out there. Yeah. Like, um, and you know, well, and it, with so that understanding, if you listen to Fauci, yeah, 
your yeah your, your BS your... meter ought to be going off a lot. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, and this is a guy who has, I think, has tunnel vision about what the answer to medical problems is. Yeah, he is a true believer in vaccines. Yeah, <clears throat> and he always has been. And I, I go back to the AIDS thing, um, and because. You know, they're like, all right, this is a guy who was in, in, in control of the NIH when the AIDS epidemic was going on. And so, yeah. And what he did was he promoted AZT that ended up killing a bunch of people. Um, he denied uh, the use of uh, effective treatments for one of the diseases that ended up killing AIDS patients. That, like an effective treatment that had been used for the actual disease yeah. um, for a long time without any problems. And he denied its use in AIDS patients as a prophylactic probably cost thousands of lives. Um, He's been promoting vaccines for AIDS ever since. For (laughs) 40 whatever years, he's been promoting vaccines for AIDS and spending billions of our dollars, of taxpayer dollars year after year to try and develop a vaccine for AIDS. And they haven't, succeeded yeah, yeah and in fact they their most recent one ended up killing like 25 percent of the people that used it in the same way that remdesivir kills about 25 percent of the people that used it regularly which if you'll recall he yeah. was promoting at the beginning of covid yes he was so this guy has uh Very- has a history of failure and he but the main thing is that he he believes in one answer to all problems, it seems, and that's vaccines. He is a huge promoter of vaccines. Now, I can't speak to his motives, but I can tell you something about vaccines and pharmaceutical companies. Yeah. And that is that vaccines are a godsend to pharmaceutical companies. Oh, yeah. They love vaccines because vaccine is something that they can charge a regular price for over and over and over and over and over again. Yeah. And, um, and the best part is they take on no liability. So it is a high reward, no risk venture for pharmaceutical companies. Absolutely. Yeah. And which is the reason I, the reason I believe that the push is so hard for these boosters. It's just a cash in for the, for the pharmaceutical companies. Welfare program for pharmaceuticals. Well, and I think that, I think that everybody kind of realizes that, well, I hope that, that we're on the road here to the vaccine thing being over. Because if this Omicron becomes the dominant strain and it's not deadly and it's not um, as severe, uh, people are not going to want to keep getting these vaccines. And there's a full court press to get the last one in, the the third one, because I think after three, people are going to really start questioning. Yeah, when you start asking for the fourth and the fifth vaccine. Yeah, because pe- uh, people already look like, whoa, 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 like three. Yeah. like <laughs> so. Had enough of this. Exactly. Had enough of this. So. Um, so yeah, that's our, that's our update on COVID for almost two years now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Got to talk about it every week. Man. I, know, I just mean, it's just past. such a big part of our life. Like, yeah. I mean, well, it, no it's such a it. threatening part and well, not yeah. because of the, the, the virus, the virus itself, but, but because response. of the reaction. Well, and yeah. it was crazy when the, the stuff started coming out about the Omicron, um, and there was already like the markets went crazy, but the reason the markets went crazy wasn't because there was all this big fear that a bunch of people were fixing to die. Mm-hmm. It was because what is the government's going to do in response? Yeah. Like that's, that's where the fear came from. Mm-hmm. Um, so I mean, that's, you know, yeah. That, the, the, at the end of the day, the government is what the problem is going to be. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's for just, everything. For everything, and this this <laughs> in, like by far worse than mm-hmm. most things. But yeah. you know, yeah. um, if you really trace the the problem of almost any situation that you run into, that's a problem. Yeah. In the end, you find that it originates with government. Yeah. Somewhere along the way. Yeah. Yeah. Um. All right. Well, uh, let's go ahead and wrap up then. Um. Let's see. Next week is the 16th. We're we're getting in close to Christmas, so I'm not sure how that's going to affect our schedule. I'm still good. Christmas should be not a problem. I mean, I'm, work's going to be kind of crazy, but um, yeah. I mean, the Christmas is on a Saturday. Yeah. So, I mean, we should have two shots at recording that week. Yeah. Anyway. So, yeah, our regularly scheduled program would be, so next week will be the, it'll be the 16th and then it'll be Christmas Eve Eve. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which hopefully we can pull off. Which is Festivus by my is it? Oh, you're not a Seinfeld fan, so no, yeah. No. I guess you wouldn't know anything about <laughs> Festivus. I just, I don't like that program. <laughs> oh, I love that program. And I'm a big celebrator of Festivus. It's just like one funny person and three people screaming. 
Oh. That's that's what it is to me. I just, and and the one funny it's, person is is not there enough. So it, most of the time, it's just three people screaming. Well, it's it, it is one of those programs that like there's not a lot of middle, middle ground. Like you don't talk mm-hmm. to a lot of people that are just mad about it. They either <laughs> love it or they hate it. Yeah. Like that was not so. a fan. Yeah, you're you're on that side of the spectrum. Yeah, I, I will say, speaking of programs that I that I do enjoy, yeah. um, since Omicron came out. Yeah. I kept I keep thinking about uh, the um, the Omicronians from Futurama. From oh, yeah. Omicron Percy I eight. <laughs> Omicron and, Percy I eight. Yeah. And if I was a uh, if I was more of a conspiracy nut, um, I might make more out of the fact that that is in fact the lizard people in Futurama. <laughs> uh, so so the lizard people are mocking us. Yeah. Uh, it's the, the lizard people in government are mocking us. <laughs> And so on that crazy note, um, follow us <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <right? laughs> on Facebook, uh, subscribe on iTunes, Podbean, YouTube, um, check the website. I haven't started writing. Maybe if people like start emailing me, Michael at the Liberty Mike and getting on to me about how lazy I am about writing, it might, <laughs> you know, promote me to write more. I'm going to start, all. I'm gonna start um, sending you emails every day. Sure you will. <laughs> sure you will. I don't, no. I'm not too concerned. You're not concerned. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, barring anything unforeseen, uh, we will be back here in a week when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later. Later.